This is Deshanta B, and welcome to Let Me Read to You. Disclaimer, I do not own or have any rights to the story that I will be reading today. I am narrating this story for educational purposes and for fun. The name of the story that I will be reading is called What is Given from the Heart by author Patricia C. McKizak, illustrated by April Harrison. You know what time it is. Let me read to you and stop playing. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. It was a rough few months for Mama and me. We were already poor, but we got poorer last April when Daddy went to sleep on the front porch and never woke up. Mama cried and cried because Daddy didn't have a suit to be buried in. Come June, we lost the farm and moved to a rundown shotgun house in the bottoms. On Friday the 13th, it rained frogs. Everything flooded and Smitty, my dog, disappeared. Misery loves company, Mama said, shaking her head as she swept water out the back door. I hugged her up close the way I always did when she was sad or I was scared. Long as we have our health and strength, we are blessed, James Otis, Mama said trying to sound brave. But things didn't get any better. We got an early snowfall in November and Christmas was skimpy but we made it through to the new year. Foe, I realized, February was upon us with Valentine's Day just two weeks away. One Sunday, Reverend Dennis made an announcement during services. Just as we always do, We'll be delivering love boxes to needy folk in our community, he said. Irene Temple and her little girl have lost everything in a fire. We must add them to our list. Next week, bring whatever you think might be useful to them. Remember, what is given from the heart reaches the heart. James Otis, we need to help out, Mama said on a cold walk home. I came back with, how we gonna do that, Mama? We ain't got nothing ourselves. Mama kept right on talking. Sister Bunch told me the daughter's name is Sarah. She's seven, two years younger than you. You can find a little bit of something for her, don't you think? I wasn't convinced. What do I have that a little girl would want? Now, now, said Mama. Remember what Reverend Dennis said. What is given from the heart reaches the heart. That night, I lay warm and toasty under one of Mama's quilts. Still, it made me tremble to think about fire taking away what little we did have. What can I give Sarah to make up for all she's lost, I wondered. I considered the blue ribbon I'd won in the school spelling bee. Nah, the award was important to me, but it would mean nothing to her. I looked over at my beautiful sparkling rock, the one I found down by the creek. But how would that help Sarah? You can't eat a rock. 
unable to come up with anything good. I pulled the covers over my head and drifted off to sleep. Come morning, I found Mama in the kitchen busy sewing. I know if we had a fire, I would miss my aprons, Mama explained. So I've decided to make Mrs. Temple one. But Mama, you're using your white tablecloth, the only nice thing you have. James Otis, I'm stitching with a loving heart. My hope is that this apron will give as much joy to Mrs. Temple as the tablecloth has given me. Mama's smile was a welcome sight. That made me study harder on what I could contribute. Maybe Sarah would like something to play with, like my whistle from Dexter Benson's birthday party. But my spit was all over it. What about my crayons? I drew so many pictures with them, even though the black, pink, and dark blue were missing. No way. I couldn't give her used crayons. And I couldn't give her my pencil that was just a nub and not much eraser left either. As time flew towards Valentine's Day, I fretted more and more. I considered giving Sarah a puzzle. It didn't bother me that two pieces were missing, but it might bother her. Uh, uh, that wouldn't do. Not even with a bow on it. And neither would my capeless Superman Halloween costume. Then I remembered my book, Things That Roll. Mama paid 10 cents for it at the resale shop. I read it every night until I memorized each word. And then I drew pictures of all the stuff that rolled. Sarah might enjoy my book, I thought. But maybe she didn't like trucks and marbles and such. Still, it got me to thinking. I gathered my crayons, my pencil, and some paper and got busy. On the Sunday before Valentine's Day, we were off to church. Along the way, Mama told me, as usual, the trustees will deliver the love boxes to the homes of the needy. But Reverend Dennis has invited the temples to receive theirs at Olive Chapel so they can meet the congregation. The church was full. Mama beamed as she carefully placed the apron in the box. When we presented the temples, with their love box, filled with all kinds of clothing, food, tools, and toys. Mrs. Temple was overcome with emotion. The congregation shouted, Amen. Even so, Sarah seemed sad and afraid. She clung to her mama's arm and hid her face. I walked over to where they were standing. Hi, Sarah, I said, sounding cheery-like. My name is James Otis, and I'm pleased to meet you. Same to you, she answered, looking at her feet. Here, I said, handing her my gift. I wrote it, drew the pictures, and put it together by myself, just for you. Sarah managed to smile 
as she stared at the book I'd made. Then, real slow-like, she read the cover. From My Heart to Your Heart by James Otis Petway. It's about a little girl named Sarah and... Don't tell me, she said. I want to read about myself by myself. I can't believe it, she squealed. A book about me. Then she covered her mouth to catch a giggle. Seeing little Sarah happy made me happy too. I laughed out loud. I put some hard words in so you can look them up. You sound like my teacher. Sarah pressed the book to her heart, closed her eyes and whispered, Thank you, James Otis. I will keep this book forever and ever. Walking home, Mama held my hand. The temples looked very grateful, she said. I think we reached their hearts, I said. Mama nodded. I'm proud of you, James Otis. How come, I asked. Cause you're you. In winter, night comes early. The sky was darkening and it had started to snow. I stuck my tongue out to catch a snowflake as Mama spun joyfully round and round. Suddenly, Mama stopped. Look, there's something on our porch, she said. I rushed ahead and there it was, a love box had been delivered to us. And our hearts rejoiced. Our hearts rejoiced. What is given from the heart. The end. This is Deshanta B, the narrator of Let Me Read to You. Thank you for listening to What is Given from the Heart by author Patricia C. McKissack. Illustrated by April Harrison. The music bump in this video is available at the YouTube free audio library. Like, subscribe, and share this video. You know what time it is. Let me read to you. And stop playing. And until the next book. Bye, guys.